cleans my guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you I want to share with you a very important revelation here and it's about the judgment of the religious naked tares and it was given to Belinda uh, on the 7th of this month she said I had a dream that spanned three nights uh, night one I dreamed that I found myself in a room and the only thing in the room was a very large book all the way to the back of the room. Well, you know, the Bible is kept as a holy artifact by a lot of people, but they don't open it, and they don't use it as a provision and a guide for life. It's just a big book that they keep. It's holy. We wouldn't want to write in it or anything like that, right? You know what I'm talking about. And she went on to say, and it was being held up, that is that big book, by a beautiful pearl inlaid book holder. You've seen that kind of stuff, haven't you? As I walked up to this book, I immediately saw that it said, The Holy Bible, in large golden embossed print. And um, a verse came to her. It was Matthew 23 and 17. Ye fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that hath sanctified the gold? I'm sure she's applying this. Is it more important to read the book <laughs> or just look on it and claim it as God's holy book? A lot of people do that. You know, most of you recognize the, the more decrepit denominations as doing such things as that but there are people that do the same thing and they claim to be Christian she said when I opened the book I heard the Holy Spirit say to me read John 3 and 6 so I read it that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit you can't get born of the spirit looking at the outside of the book, can you? Or even revering it and putting it on its stand and never opening it. And uh, kind of, a lot of people have lots of Bibles on their shelves, but they spend a lot of time in TV and other things that they think are more important. But really, this is how the Son of God is manifested in His people. This is how fruit is manifested in God's people. The, the Bible is revered in, uh, in the flesh as a holy book, but it's not respected enough to open it and let it bear fruit in the mind and heart and actions of a person. And uh, many people are just religious, and they walk after the lusts of their flesh, but they revere the book. It won't do you any good that way. You actually got to... Open it up and put it in there, right? She said, after I read the verse, the Holy Spirit shared knowledge with me concerning this verse. Then I was led by the Holy Spirit to read Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. So you can tell who it is that's going to attain to the new birth, spirit, soul, and body. It's the people that are running after it. They mind the things of the Spirit. The worldly Christians mind the things of the flesh. They waste the little amount of time that they've got to run the race and come into the fruit. They waste it giving in to the lusts of the flesh, right? That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. How are you going to be born of the spirit if you don't let the spirit speak to you through the word of God? And uh, uh, there's some more verses I'd like to share with you right after her Romans 8 and 5 is verse 6. It says, For the mind of the flesh is death. 
How do we get the renewed mind of the Spirit? Uh, reading the Word of God. Consuming the Word of God. The mind of the flesh, even in a Christian, is death. Because he's talking to Christians here. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Oh, boy. Do we ever need peace and faith for the days that are coming? In verse 7, Because the mind of the flesh is enmity against God. It's your enemy. The mind of the flesh, that which you inherited and that which you were taught as you were growing up, that's against God. Even if you were taught it in religion, it makes no difference. It's against God. Antichrists are in the pulpit Antichrists are teaching God's people. Antichrist denominations are out there gathering in God's people. It's against God, enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. That's how you know something is at enmity or is the enemy of God. It's not subject to God's word. Neither indeed can it be. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And, of course, they have no part in the kingdom of God because they're not born of the Spirit. They're born of the flesh. You say, well, David, I had a born-again experience. That doesn't mean you're born of the Spirit. It means you're born of the Spirit in your spirit. It doesn't mean you're born of the Spirit in your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. That's where eternal life comes from. You have to bear the fruit of what God put in your spirit in your soul. That's what has to happen. In verse 12 it says, So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you must die. Notice he said, brethren. Brethren, if you live after the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, where do you get your power from? The Spirit. Do you need to be filled with the Spirit? Oh, yes, you must be filled with the Spirit. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. There's a condition there. Lots of people like to rip those out of their Bible, or in their doctrine, or in their mind. They like to rip them out. Many Christians disrespect the unregenerate apostates neglect of the word, but for all practical purposes, they do the same thing as they run after the world. They're denying the Lord. The Lord is in that book, and the Lord wants to speak to you out of that book. He wrote that for us. He wrote that to give us the renewed mind of Christ. And Belinda goes on to say, And once again, after I read the verse, the Holy Spirit shared knowledge with me. Again, I was asked of the Holy Spirit to read Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth unto his own flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So, how do you sow to your flesh? Well, instead of feeding your mind with the Word of God and the um, works of of the Spirit, instead of feeding on these things, you feed your mind with garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. Right? What you sow is what you reap. Right? He that soweth unto his own flesh shall of that flesh reap corruption. You put a different seed in there, it's Antichrist. You're either for me or against me, the Lord said. Right? But he that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap eternal life. Notice there's a condition there. You have to, as a Christian, you have to sow something that's of the Spirit and for your Spirit. You have to sow something. You're only going to reap what you sow. If you don't sow it, you're not going to reap. That's what the Word of God says. And Isaiah 29 and 13 says, and the Lord said, For as much as this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and with their lips, they do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear of me is a commandment of men which hath been taught them. Yeah, the only thing people know to form their conscience is what they were taught in Sunday school 
or in the pulpit. And guess what? A lot of those guys aren't living it either. So they're just sowing in you what's in them, and that's not good. And we, what we need is something pure. And Jesus, in the parable of the sower, said that that seed, which is the Word of God, is that good thing that's going to manifest Christ in you. The fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. In other words, don't, don't be like the outwardly religious, but inwardly lost. Read and assimilate the Bible into yourself. If we're not assimilated into Christ by the Word, we will be assimilated by the Borg. I know some of y'all are laughing. The Borg, is a, I think, was a good representation of the beast, right? You know, it's going to be one or the other. Um, garbage in, garbage out. Truth in, truth out. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. Spend time with the truth. Don't spend time with poison that comes from the world because it all is. Anything that comes from them can't be good. And she said this went on for hours. In other words, the Lord was giving her verses and giving her understanding. This went on for hours. Uh, I would be asked of the Holy Spirit to read a verse of Scripture, and then the Holy Spirit would share knowledge with me. It didn't take long for me to realize that all of the Scriptures that the Holy Spirit wanted me to read concerned the flesh. It was all about the flesh. And she gives Romans 8 and 7, Because the mind of the flesh is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And uh, that was the end of night one. You know, Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, brethren... I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, deny yourself and cause your body to do what the Word of God says. Holy and acceptable to God. That is, presenting your body a living sacrifice, it makes you holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual service, or reasonable service, as some versions say. But, see, nothing less is reasonable. You are, were bought with a price. You are owned by God, and you must obey Him to bear fruit. And verse 2 says, And be not fashioned according to this world. Some people are so intent on pleasing the world and the people of the world and relatives and, and so, so on and so forth. Boy, I tell you, Jesus and the prophets weren't worried about that. <laughs> they were persecuted, and all the man-child types were persecuted and hated, and they weren't in, interested in pleasing the world, and, and because of that, the people of God who were interested in pleasing the world persecuted them. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. How are you going to be transformed if you're not going to renew your mind? He's talking to Christians here. Christians have to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. If they don't, they're not bearing fruit. If they're not bearing fruit, it's like the parable of the sower. He mentioned four groups there. At least three of them were Christians. But only one of them bore fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. You see, there's conditions all in the Word. Don't believe that once saved, always saved garbage. And you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you want to prove that? You must bear fruit. Okay, then night two came, and uh, she said, I dreamed I was in a big city, which she believed represented the world, and I was walking in a large crowd of people. As I looked around at this crowd of people, I saw 
that most of these people were completely naked. And um, she says, that means walking in the flesh. I agree. There were just a few people here and there who were clothed, meaning sanctified and walking in the Spirit. And uh, she gives Psalm 132 and 9. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. We are dressed up. We are clothed by obedience to the word, not lip service. Our wedding garments are our righteous works. Now listen carefully to these verses. When I read this, these are the verses that came to me. Romans 13 and 12. The night is far spent. Wow, never so more than today, right? The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Cast off like a garment the works of darkness. If you don't take that garment off, you can't put the other one on. And let us put on the armor of light. Well, notice, it's not just a garment, it's armor. Because the light defends you against everything. The curse, the uh, spiritual enemies in heavenly places, uh, mankind, uh, tribulation, uh, the curse. You put on the armor of light. Take off the works of darkness. Put on the armor of light. This is what you need to do to prepare for the things that are coming, right? Amen. And uh, verse 13, let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, meaning, you know, um, intoxicated with uh, the lusts of this world, you know, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and jealousy. See, all these things are the works of darkness. You must take them off or you can't put on the armor of light. And we see people overcome by these things in these days because they walked after the flesh. They're totally overcome. God's trying to teach them a lesson so that they will repent and quickly go the other way before it's too late. 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. We can put on Christ. So that it's not us that lives, it's Christ that lives. And make not provision for the flesh. In other words, don't give in to the flesh. You don't have to. You've heard the gospel. He delivered you out of the power of darkness, right? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. As long as you do that, you can't put on the armor of light. you got to take off the garment of the works of darkness to put on the garment of light, right? And Revelation 19 and 8, And it was given unto her, that is the bride, that she should array herself in fine linen, bright and pure. Notice that she should array herself in fine linen. you got to put on righteousness and take off wickedness, right? Fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So, to put on the wedding garment, you have to have righteous acts. Amen? You don't walk in the steps of Jesus. Everyone, Let everyone that says they abide in Him walk as He walked. If you don't believe you can walk in the steps of Jesus, you can't be a saint. A saint is a sanctified one, a holy one. And Revelation 16 and 15 says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. From what? From evil works. 
lest he walk naked. Oh, there it is. See, if you got evil works, you're walking naked. You haven't put on Christ, who is the Word of God. Many people are walking naked. Lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. We are actually putting on the garment of the new body, believe it or not. I don't have time to go into that today, but it's an amazing study, folks. In Jude 1 and 22, And on some have mercy who are in doubt, and some save, snatching them out of the fire. And on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So you can have a garment that's got flesh in it, a, a good garment that's got flesh in it. What's going to happen if a person's, uh, first of all, less than 30-fold fruit? Well, they're not going to make it in the kingdom because Jesus never promised that. Okay. Suppose your garment is uh, more flesh than righteousness. Well, then you're not bearing fruit. And it's only the righteous part that would get you into the kingdom, right? Well, now unto him that is able to guard you from stumbling and to set you before the presence of his glory without blemish. So God is able to do this. You're not waiting on him, folks. He's already been crucified for you. He's already made reconciliation for you. You must believe that. You must be interested enough in the book to open it up and feed your soul. Your soul needs to be fed of the spiritual man, not the carnal man. If you spend all of your time in the world and the lust of the flesh, how is your soul going to live? How is it going to bear fruit? Your food is the Word. So, He's able to set you before His presence without blemish, in exceeding joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power before all time, and now, and forevermore. Amen. And Belinda said, As I was walking through this crowd of people, I noticed that the naked people seemed so disoriented and confused. And she said, no path of light or truth of the word to guide them. Well, that's true. But the people who were clothed were all walking on a straight white line. That's the narrow road, isn't it? And they were walking straight in front of them. Yeah. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. It's easy to go down the broad road. The other road is crucifying. It's crucifying your flesh. If you suffer in the flesh, you cease from sin. That's what the Lord said. You must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. The easy way, the broad way, is it leads to destruction. And many are they that enter in thereby. Notice, they weren't there. They entered in there. Oh, my goodness. Are you saying there's going to be a, there's a great falling away? Uh-huh. That's what he's saying. He's not talking about the world. And Balloon said, As I was observing the people who were clothed, I heard a voice say, Follow me. John 10.27 says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. They hear the voice of the Lord, and they follow the voice of the Lord. That's his sheep. The rest are not. It doesn't matter if you had an experience with the Lord or not. If you don't hear his voice and follow him, you're not of his sheep. Same thing he told those Jews. Obviously, they had a covenant with God. But they didn't hear his voice, and they weren't following him. So they still claimed to be the people of God. He told them, no, you're of your father the devil. 
Let me say to the Christians out there that don't follow the Lord, you're of your father the devil. It doesn't matter that you once had a covenant with God. You're of your father the devil. It's his fruit that you're bearing. Therefore, you're of him. If you will submit, humbly submit, repent, confess the word of God, you will have life from heaven. That's his promise. And uh, Belinda says, being led out of the world, or Egypt, by the word, Jesus Christ. Yes, that's what he wants to do. Amen. And then there's night three. Once again, I found myself walking in a crowd of people. But this time, all the people who were clothed were all gone. Now, she didn't say to heaven. They just weren't in this group, okay? Only the naked people were left. And they were all walking into a large warehouse-type building. And uh, she said a warehouse is a commercial-type building for storage. Uh Uh-huh. And um, I might say that the undressed tares are being stored up for the fire. Jesus said the end-time harvest was for separating the fruitless, undressed people from the righteous. This is what the tribulation and the mark of the beast is for. Jesus said in Matthew 13 and 30, He said, Let both, that is the wheat and the tares, grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, okay, that's the end time, right? In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the tares and bind them in bundles. In other words, put them in storage (laughs) to burn them. In other words, he's getting them ready to be burned. Put them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And verse 40 says, As therefore the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. And folks, this is what's happening right now. They're being gathered up for the fire. Do you want to be among them? Well, the fire is coming. In verse 41, The Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom. Notice, out of His kingdom. Not out of the world. Out of His kingdom all that cause stumbling, and them that do iniquity. And things wasn't in there in the original. All that cause stumbling and them that do iniquity. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Where did the three Hebrews go? Into the furnace of fire. Did it touch them? No, it didn't touch them. But it burned everything else up in there. Even the men that threw them in there burned up in there. Right? They were burned up when they threw them in there. Whoa. So, you know, there may be wicked people bringing us into trouble and tribulation, but they're the ones that are going to be burned up by the fire. The bonds that they had were burned off. And he said, There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He that hath ears, let him hear. The undressed tares, folks, are being gathered into storage for the fire. He's going to cause his people to shine forth. He's taking out from the midst of his people the tares, those that don't bear the fruit of the word. He is doing it now. And he's going to continue to do it until the great and terrible day of the Lord. And many are going through the fire during the tribulation period. Many will die. Many will lose their life. Many wicked will go through terrible things in the tribulation period. 
But the end for the righteous is going to be the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's when the Lord comes for them, and those that persecuted them are going into the ultimate destruction called the great and terrible day of the Lord. Well, Linda said, I watched as these people went through the big double doors of this warehouse and were all seated at classroom-style desks and chairs. Hey, that's the Borg or the beast assimilating the naked. Yeah, you know what I mean? Assimilating, bringing them into himself. You know, the beast. Making them a part of himself. There's a certain affinity there, you know. The naked are, uh, have an affinity for the beast and the ways of the world and the things of Antichrist. It doesn't matter if they call themselves Christians or, or had an experience with the Lord. It makes no difference. Whosoever goeth onward and abideth not in the teaching hath not God. Did you hear what the Lord said? Whosoever goeth onward and abideth not in the teachings hath not God. This is how you tell the true from the false. Did these people have an experience with the Lord? Sure. But it's not having the Holy Spirit that saves you and brings fruit in you. It's obeying and following the Holy Spirit that saves you and causes you to come into the image and the fruit of Christ. Right? Amen. She said, they reminded me of when I was in elementary school back in the 60s when the desks and chairs were all one piece. Yeah. She said, after everyone was seated, they were each given a sewing machine. Uh, She said, sewing the flesh, right? And a box of material. They were all told to make themselves a garment. Well, you know, we're all making a garment, folks. Good or bad, we're all making it. But the Lord said in Isaiah that their webs would not cover them. A web is something that has lots of holes through it, right? Their webs wouldn't cover them. And the emphasis here is on self. Notice, he said they were all told to make themselves a garment. In other words, to walk after their own works or garment, right? Your works are making your garment. Please remember that. Isaiah 4 and 1 and seven women apostates from the seven churches shall take hold of one man that is Jesus in the man child in that day saying we will eat our own bread which is their own word just like they do in the churches, you know, and wear our own apparel. In other words, self works. Only let us be called by thy name. That's Christian, right? We want to be called Christian, but we don't want to walk as the Savior. And they called them Christians, by the way, because they did walk and talk as the Savior. Take thou away our reproach. Just save us, Lord. We don't want to change. Just save us. That's what they're saying. And it's not going to happen, is it? No. Many, many are called, but few are chosen. Not everybody's called. I mean, go look at the Bible. You'll find that when it talks about called in that way, it's always talking about God's people who called us and saved us. Well, these people were instructed that they could make any kind of garment they wanted. In other words, you can do anything you want to do. Your works can be anything you want. Meaning, they can walk after any fleshly works they like. Right? Put on any kind of garment they want. She said, however, they were given one stipulation. And that was that the garment could not be all white. Meaning it could not look like Jesus. Hey, churches do that too, don't they? 
And the Colossians 2 and 3 is, in, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden. We must obey and abide in Jesus Christ. Awesome. Awesome God. Thank you, Father, for what you've done for us. Thank you for drawing us into your kingdom. Thank you for giving us your word by which we can be holy, by which we can have the renewed mind, by which we can run after you. Glory be to God. You know, Romans 2.5 says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up for thyself wrath. You storing up wrath in the day of wrath. See, sometimes God lets people continue on and on and on. But then, as they say, they have to pay the piper. Right? Treasure is up for thyself in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So there's coming a day for everyone. Not necessarily the judgment day down the road, but your judgment day. There is coming a day. Some people meet that day long before the, the great judgment day. You, when you die, it's over, folks. You're not going to pray anyone out of hell. And there is no purgatory. Let me read that again. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, unrepentant heart, treasures up for thyself wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his works or garments. See, the garments that you're making is the one that God is going to judge you. It's, it's what kind of body you're going to have in the coming days, too. And verse 7, To them that by patience in well-doing, notice how they make their garments, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and incorruption eternal life. To them that by patience and well-doing, who seek for glory and honor and incorruption, they will receive eternal life. But unto them that are factious, in other words, they're divisive, they're critical, they're angry, they're unforgiven. But to them that are factious and obey not the truth, but obey unrighteousness, shall be wrath and indignation tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that worketh evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek O oh Lord listen to God's word he cannot lie everything he says is truth he cannot lie listen to his word Please turn your life over to Him. Repent. Confess your sins one to another and uh, pray one for another. Uh, turn to God. Judgment is coming in a, in a way many people, by the way, <clears throat> have been thinking that they've been getting away with this, even thinking that God is winking at their sinful lives. Well, very quickly, uh, God is going to help them to understand that this is not so. They've just been treasuring up for themselves wrath in the day of wrath. What can quench my thirsting soul? Purest water make me whole. Let your streams of mercy flow, oh Jesus. I trust in you Though the mountains fall into the sea Though the rivers rise I still believe For your mercy stands and your word For information and materials and to contribute go to ubm1.org Contributions only may be addressed to UBM PO Box 544 Madisonville, Tennessee, 37354.
light The shining rays of red and white Jesus, I trust in you O oh, sacred heart, in you I find Mercy seated for all